So um, we'll talk about mixture models and the expectation maximization algorithm. Um, so, and uh, one way to think of EM, one way to think of mixture models is in relation to the clustering methods. Uh, remember we had classification of different clustering methods. Some of them are hard boundaries, so element either goes into the cluster or doesn't. Uh, and I said that some clustering methods are soft, right? So that's where an element kind of belongs to multiple clusters at the same time, but with different degree of belief, right? It can have um, it can have a, you know, say a confidence of 60% in cluster 1 or 40% in cluster 2, but it can be in two simultaneously. So uh, mixture models are basically a probabilistically sound way of doing uh, soft clustering. And what you do in mixture models, in Gaussian mixtures, which we're going to cover, uh, is uh, each cluster uh, corresponds to a generative model. It corresponds to a probability distribution. So that's typically a Gaussian or a multinomial, and we're going to run through a Gaussian example because we're um, sort of uh, looking for real values. Um, so each cluster basically corresponds to a probability distribution, and what you want to discover as part of the EM algorithm are the parameters of the probability distribution. So that would be the mean and the covariance of each Gaussian. If you have a Gaussian or for a multinomial, it would be the probabilities for each uh, outcome of the random variable. <clears throat> and, and the EM algorithm is what allows you to infer those parameter values. So look, let's, let, let's look at the problem with, with, with a small example. Right? Suppose I have a bunch of data points like that, and I know that these two data points come from two sources. They come from two models. Right? So these guys come from the yellow source, and these guys come from the blue source. Now, uh, if I know that there are two sources, and I assume that the sources are Gaussian, the, it's a one-dimensional task. The only thing that I need to do for a one-dimensional Gaussian is estimate the mean and estimate the variance. Right? So do we know how to do that? Yeah, it's, it's pretty easy. Why? Because we know which points came from which Gaussian. So uh, say for the blue Gaussian, I have one, two, three, four, five data points that came from it. So all I need to do is I just need to take their x values, add them up, divide them by five, and that's going to give the mean, uh, that's going to give me an estimate of the mean of the blue Gaussian, right? And the same thing for the variance. I take their x values, subtract from them the blue mean. By the way, that should not be mu1, that should be mu of b, the blue mean, uh, and that's the blue mean as well. Right? You always subtract the same thing. <clears throat> uh, so you take the squared deviations from the blue mean, average them out, and that is your estimate for the variance of that Gaussian. So I can do it for the blue, I can do it for the yellow, and lo and behold, I'll get my estimates of the two Gaussians. Um, now, this is great. We know how to do this. We did this in the first lecture. Um, and this is based on knowing which point came from which distribution. So what if you have that? Right? What if you have just a bunch of data points? You don't know which one of them came from the yellow, which one of them came from the blue. Can we fit the Gaussians now? Well, that's a lot trickier, isn't it? Right? Because we don't know, now we don't know which ones, which ones go where. Right? We don't know which ones came from the blue, which ones came from the yellow. And this is the situation that you have uh, in, when you're doing mixture models. You have a bunch of data points, and you suspect that they came from k different Gaussians, but you have no idea which points came from which Gaussian. Right? So you're going to fit the parameters, but you don't, know, uh, you don't know which point came from where. Um, and that makes, it, that makes it hard. Now, uh, if we happened to know the parameters of the Gaussian, right? So if somebody came along and told us that the blue Gaussian has a certain mean and variance and the yellow Gaussian has a certain mean and variance, right? So if we knew where the Gaussians were, we could actually figure out which point is likely from which Gaussian, right? Because for each point, we could compute, well, what is the probability of that point coming from the yellow Gaussian? Is that going to be big or small? Big, right? It's right on the mean, right? Uh, what, what's the probability that it came from the blue? Small. So this point very likely came from the yellow Gaussian and not the blue Gaussian. So if somebody came along and told you the parameters, here are the means, here are the variances, you could 
work out which point came from which Gaussian. And the way you would do that is just using the, 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 the Bayes rule and the Gaussian formula, right? So the probability that, that, the probability that a certain point xi uh, is blue, use Bayes rule, and for the generative probability, you just stick them to the Gaussian. Take the point xi, subtract, it, subtract from, from it the blue mean, square it, divide it by, the, uh, by two of blue variances, exponentiate it, and there you have a number. Right. So and in this case, what you would expect is uh, these points are probably more likely to be blue, and these points are more likely uh, to, be, to be yellow. So what you have is you have a bit of a chicken and egg problem. Right? If somebody told you which points came from which source, you could estimate the means and variances trivially. But nobody tells you which point came from where. Now, if you had the parameters, if you knew the means and the variances, you could figure out which point came from which distribution. Uh, but again, you don't have that, right? So, so you need one to estimate the other and the other to estimate the one. Uh, and that's what the EM algorithm uh, basically does for you. The way it works is it's going to start by placing the Gaussians randomly in space somewhere, right? Much like the k-means algorithm. So it's going to come up with a random mean and the random variance. Um, and then what it's going to do is for each point xi, it's going to try to figure out with these current parameters, does this xi look like it came from the yellow or the blue Gaussian? And it's going to assign them to the yellow or blue, but unlike k-means, it's not going to do a hard assignment. So k-means takes a point and puts it into one cluster or the other. EM computes the probability that it goes into the blue cluster or the yellow. And it never quantizes that probability. It never sets it to 0 or 1. It just keeps it as a number between 0 and 1. Right? So that's why it's soft clustering. It doesn't assign a point. It says, here's the probability that it came from this distribution, and here's the probability that it came from that distribution. Okay. Now, once it has computed these assignments, the probability that it came from the blue, it's going to use those numbers to re-estimate the means and the variances to fit the points, the point assignments a little bit better. So that part is very much like k-means. The part that's different is that you're using probabilities here. Right. <clears throat> and then, just like k-means, you keep iterating this until it converges. 